friends. On this most holy night, when we gather to mark the beginning of the Easter season, we recall the Passover celebrated by the Jews, the people of Israel, and we remember too the night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life. Our service begins with a series of readings and psalms drawing on the ancient story of God's gracious provision to Abraham and loving redemption through Moses in parting the waters of the Red Sea and in the experience of the Exodus. We'll then light our Easter fire outside and the Paschal candle, which is marked with symbols the Alpha and Omega. We'll go on a little pilgrimage into the cathedral nave and your handheld candles will be lit from the Easter candle, the light of Christ. We listen to St. Paul speaking about what Christ has done in baptism and we renew our own baptismal vows. The service will end with the dismissal and is completed tomorrow when we gather again to share communion together, to break bread and to celebrate with joy the resurrection. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you. And I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves because you have obeyed my voice. and strength 
to make the sacrifices our faith demands. Blessed are you, Lord, God of our salvation. Through the faithfulness of Abraham, all the children of the earth are blessed. Give us the courage to give up to you those things that are most precious to us, that in turn we may receive the honor and the joy of your blessing, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. Praise. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. 
On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not be a reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time and I will save the lame and gather the outcast and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home, at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Let us pray that God will fill sad hearts with songs of joy. Blessed are you, Lord, God of our salvation. You are the King who dwells in the midst of the people, as one who brings victory from the jaws of defeat. Heal the sick and gather the outcast, and turn our shame into praise, that we may sing aloud and exalt your name, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. Crossing the Red Sea. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us 
to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, but you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it so that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain victory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The, Is the Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, in the, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. 
Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. Let us pray that God will give freedom to his enslaved people. Blessed are you, Lord, God of our salvation. You heard the agony of your people as they cried out from their slavery, and you gave them Moses to lead them to a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear the cry of the enslaved and the homeless today, and lead us through the turbulent sea of life to our true home with you, O Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Amen. I'm not bothered about the lights for now, Tim. I just need to light the candle.
Ming God, you made this holy night to, share, to shine with the brightness of your one true light. Bless this new fire, set us aflame with the fire of your love, and bring us to the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, May Christ our Lord guard us and keep us. Amen. Watered. May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels, exult all creation around God's throne, sound the trumpet of 
of salvation. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen.
Christ was raised from the dead so that we may walk in newness of life. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ.
Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, chapter 16, beginning at the first verse. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed, for you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look. There is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of Christ. one of my favorite services of the year because it involves fire. <laughs> Not many churches have, I mean, we might have candles, but we have like fire, fire out there. I love this service. I love cathedral worship because it gives us opportunities, if we seize them, to be still and to experience something profound. The theme of this service here is baptism. In fact, after this sermon, you know, 45 or 50 minutes from now, <laughs> after, I, after the sermon, we will renew our baptismal vows, those who are baptized in the church. And this raises some obvious, but maybe questions we don't think very often, like what is baptism? Why would, we, why would we renew baptismal vows? Of all the 366 days this year, why tonight? Of all the nights that we could do that, why tonight, the night before Resurrection Sunday, would we do that? 
And fortunately, I also happen to be kind of in year four of a five-year research program fellowship looking at the significance of baptism. Um, and so I might have a couple of things to say, to share with us about the significance and the deep significance of that. And so to set that aside, I want to ask you a question right now. Um, why do you do the things that you do when you get out of bed in the morning? I mean, apart from the practicalities of food and kids and jobs, right? But, but when you choose to do things to be a certain kind of person in this world, maybe because you believe something about Jesus, why do you do them? Why do you choose to be the kind of person that you choose to become in your everyday life? That's an interesting question. Um, and surprise, surprise, maybe I would like to invite you to consider what role does your baptism play in that? When you say, I'm going to do something, or I'm going to not do something, oftentimes we say maybe something along the lines of what would Jesus have done if he was here? I want to ask you to maybe consider what role it might be if we were to ask yourself or to say, well, I'm going to do this because I'm baptized. And to get into that, I want to talk to you about what, well, what is baptism. And I, when I say the word baptism, what I would like you to think about, or the image that I would like you to have, is one of fusing or joining. That baptism is a process of being bound and fused together. And there's metaphors in the scriptures that talk about this, work at two different levels. And one of them is this binding. In the English translation, sometimes it says we are, union, we are in union with Jesus or in union with Christ. And there's a fusing or a binding that occurs in baptism. One of the other metaphors that the language pushes us towards is being held in your hand. Like this. Where I grew up in a small farming community, uh, I had to mow the lawn and we had a huge lawn, it was like a big old acre with the old push mower. Um, and where I grew up, they had little toads that were about the size of your pinky knuckle, which we affectionately called pea toads because they were about the size of a pea. And when I was mowing the lawn, every once in a while, you'd see one of these little pea toads kind of crawling in the grass near me. And because I have a soul, I stopped the lawnmower and didn't run it over, but I'd pick it up and would gingerly cup it in my hand and take it off to the side and put it in the tree line of the pine trees right next to where I lived. And I want you to have this image that baptism is a joining or a fusing in which God holds you with the tender care that you might hold a small pea toad as you carry it to safety. And so this joining or this binding also raises this question of being joined or bound to what? Yes, to Jesus, but there's more than this that we're shown and revealed. And what I would like to encourage us to think of is that we are bound or fused and God carries us in a reality in reality itself, and the story that we tell in this church, not just this one, but in the church, is a story of reality of kind of two chapters. And the first chapter is a story, well actually of three, there's a creation in which humanity lives in peace, a shalom, rightness, goodness, in relationship with ourselves, with humanity, and with God, and with the land. And then we don't like that system because we don't get to be the boss. And so the story we tell in the church is that we as humanity, we make our own choices. And when we choose the word that sometimes is used is sin, but that comes with a ton of baggage. And so one of the other words that we can use is rebellion. And anyone who has a child at five or younger or 15, as mine is, <laughs> knows that we just don't like being, have someone else tell us what to do. We just don't. 
And so this language of rebellion, we rebel. And in that, we create another reality, which is marked now by strife and not by peace. Strife between each other. Spend three seconds on any social media platform. Strife between us and God. Strife with us and creation and the land as we abuse it and maltreat it. And that reality, I would like you to take a moment and think of the ugliest, creepy, crawly bug you can think of. Like, what's the one that makes you go, Gugh. for me, it's a Weta. We are um, like a fireplace, and we just a couple of weeks ago stacked eight cord of firewood to get us through the winter. Um, and about three or four times through the winter, as I go to get firewood, you pull out a log, and there is this massive Weta just kind of like, I don't know what sound they make. In my mind, it's like, weta, 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 weta. <laughs> you know? But he's just looking at me, and, and even though I know they're harmless, I'm like, Bleh! right? So I want to pick, I, whatever that bug is for you, okay? I want you to picture that bug, that ugly, creepy, crawly that gives you the willies. And I want, you to say, I want to invite you to consider that creepy, crawly, ugly thing as the embodiment of the cursed existence that our rebellion creates. This cursed world, okay? And this is the embodiment and that we put it on the ground here because this is very important and this is what our Romans passage is pushing us towards. Is that in the death of Jesus, what happens is that God does this. To the bug and it is crushed and it is killed the reality that our rebellion creates in the death of Jesus of Nazareth is destroyed and in baptism we are fused and bound to that moment. We too participate in the killing of death. And the Apostle Paul says that that is a twofold movement. For if we are bound to Jesus in his death, and his death isn't, is this process of the squashing of the bug, if we are bound to Jesus in that, I want you to take a picture, take a moment and picture the most beautiful bird you can think of. This is going to sound weird for me, but actually it's a tui for me. You're like, really? Tui? Yeah. We have a lot of them around our house, and their, their song is absolutely majestic to me. Where I grew up, we don't have birds that make any sound near that. And they are remarkable. And all summer, I hear them outside my bedroom window in the morning and outside my kitchen. Um, and it's just a beautiful thing. If you want to go old school, picture a phoenix which rises from the ash. But whatever you want to think of, I want you to picture that from that squashed bug, comes, from that death comes life. Something beautiful comes out. For me, it's a tui. Comes out of that. And the Apostle Paul wants us to know that in baptism, not only are we bound to the death, but we are also bound to the rising life. And God holds us and carries us in his hand in that twofold movement. And we are bound to reality itself. And that reality is an invitation to then live like it's really real. And it's not just something that a remarkable choir sings about in some of the most beautiful music you'll ever have the opportunity to hear. It's not just that, but it's really real. And we're reminded with smoke and fire and song and light and joy that we who are baptized are called into a life that has nothing to do with the squashed bug existence. 
God carries us in a space where life and beauty rises from the death. And so, we are baptized into the life and the death of Jesus. Fused to it, carried in it. And that truth and that reality draws forth a way of living, a way or a truth, so that when I say I'm getting up out of my bed in the morning, today it's one of the nice things about having older teenage kids, it was at 9.30 in the morning. I was like, whoa! It's because I was up till one playing video games. But anyway, when we, when we get out of bed in the morning, and we say, why will I do the things that I do because I know something about reality? What we say is, I am baptized. I am fused to the fullness of the work of God in creation. And I am carried in the hand of God in the midst of it. With the gen gentle and tender care of one saving a pea toad from a lawnmower. And that ties into our gospel reading. If I had another 45 minutes to go, I'd like to talk about th this dynamic in the gospel of Mark, which is fantastic. Throughout the entire story of the gospel of Mark, one of the things that we see is this relationship between telling and not telling. And that Jesus performs miracles all through the first two, three quarters of the, of the book. And when he, when he performs a miracle, he's like, please don't tell anyone about this. And of course, everybody's like, Foom, shoo, blah, 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 blah. And then time and again, he's like, no, 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 don't tell anybody. Shoo, blah, 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 blah. And at the resurrection, what he says is, cool, this has happened. Now, go tell everybody. And our reading stuff is like, yeah. And then they all went and they sat in the room because they were afraid. And you have this tension, and it's really cool. The original um, way that Mark was done would almost have certainly been a performance and recited kind of like by a traveling bard. And so you can picture this theme of talk, don't tell, tell, don't tell. And so the very end of it, you can see the, the storyteller saying, yes, and then the disciple, Jesus said to the disciples, go tell everybody what's happened. And they didn't, and then they were afraid. And the story ends, but it ends in a way that it lands at the feet of everyone who's listening. All of those who would say, okay, but they, they didn't tell in that story, but will you? Will you live in a way that people who don't know that God is for them would know that? When you get out of bed in the morning, will the fact that you're baptized, will that matter to you? Well, what will we do when we hear those words to us? And the rhythm of the church is this annual cycle. And in the liturgical year, on the week of Holy Week, the priests come together for what's called a chrism service. And we kind of look around the room and we say, golly, sometimes it's pretty rough, but you know what? I do like working with all y'all. And we renew our priestly ordination vows. And on Easter Saturday, on Holy Saturday, is the opportunity for those of us within the church to come together, to stare at one another and say, golly, it's pretty tough, but I really do like doing this with all y'all. Let's renew our baptismal vows together, be reminded that we are fused to the death and to the resurrection of Jesus, that we are carried in this reality by God Almighty, and that together we can live in such a way that true light and life shine in darkness. And others would know that God is on their side too, and that God is good, and that God is kind by the way we live together. Amen. Thank you, Joe. Can I invite you to stand if you have been baptized? Etifano Articrite, God is love. 
God gives us life. We love because God first loves us. In baptism, God declares that love. In Christ, God calls us to respond. Praise to God who has given us life. Blessed be God for the gift of love. Praise to God who forgives our sin. Blessed be God who sets us free. Praise to God who kindles our faith. Blessed be God, our strength, our hope. Let us, the baptized, affirm that we renounce evil and commit our lives to Christ. Blessed be God, Jesus is Lord. What is your faith? I believe and trust in God the Father, maker and sustainer of all things, and in God the Son, my Saviour Jesus Christ, and in God the Holy Spirit, giver of life and truth. This is my faith. So we're invited to recommit ourselves to live faithfully as Christians in loving service. All those who are baptized are called to worship and serve God. From the beginning, believers have continued in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers. Will you commit yourself to this life? I will, with God's help. Will you forgive others as you are forgiven? I will, with God's help. Will you seek to love your neighbor as yourself and strive for peace and justice? I will, with God's help. Will you accept the cost of following Jesus Christ in your daily life and work? I will, with God's help. With the whole church, will you proclaim by word and action the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. We pray together. Creator Spirit, rekindle in us your gifts of grace, renew our life in Christ, and bring to completion all that your calling has begun. Amen. Let us rejoice with those who have committed themselves to Christ and celebrate together the faith of our baptism. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sit for our intercessions. On this holy night, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead and restored our life of grace, we turn to God, our Father, in prayer, asking for all our needs. For all who believe in the resurrection, that through our sharing in the life of the risen Lord, this Easter may mark for us a new beginning in our life of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for peace in our world, that the peace promised by the Lord will become a reality for all people. Lord, in your mercy. For all those baptised or received into full communion with the church tonight, that they may grow, that they may continue to grow in faith and love of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the people of every nation may come to share the joy of this night, and that the good news of the death and resurrection of Christ may gladden the hearts of all. Lord, in your mercy. For all those whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended and who now sleep in death, that they may live forever in Christ, who has destroyed the power of death and opened the gates of heaven to all. Lord, in your mercy. God, our Father, as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, your Son, we ask you to strengthen us in faith, that we may proclaim the pardon and peace you have given us. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you and also with you. Alleluia. Let's share the peace with each other.
May God, who in Christ gives us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect in you the image of his glory, shed his light upon you, and strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. In quiet but joyful anticipation of tomorrow, Easter Day, when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus in the Eucharist. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs>